this episode of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine was made possible by contributions from slaves like you. Thank you very much. This story has been so done. A waste of my fucking time. Look at these poor fucking birds. All covered in some kind of fucking oil, ecological, catastrophic fucking. <laughs> it's so goddamn horrible. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Poor fucking bird. It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves, and welcome to another edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine. Now with 50% less headlines. I am your host, the Stimulator, and just in time for Earth Day. The man your mama calls Obama aimed to appease the Tea Party douchebags by taking a shit on the motherfucking planet. We need to make continued investments in clean coal technologies and advanced biofuels. A few weeks ago, I announced loan guarantees to break ground on America's first new nuclear facility in three decades. Yep, not only does our commander in shit want to convert food into fuel while furthering the ridiculous notion of clean coal or safe nuclear power, but he also wants to drill baby drill and drill now. So today we're announcing the expansion of offshore oil and gas exploration. That's why my administration will consider potential areas for development in the mid and south Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. So who really gives a flying fuck if there's a spill in the Gulf of Mexico, right? After all, it's mostly brown people who live down there. Offshore drilling and oil tanker accidents bring to mind the Exxon Valdez disaster or the oil-soaked birds in San Francisco in 2007. But you don't have to go too far. Just this week, a Chevron pipeline leaked over 18,000 gallons of crude oil into the Delta National Wildlife Refuge in Louisiana, which happens to be in the Gulf of Mexico. Drill, baby, drill, and drill now! And speaking of tanker accidents, a ginormous Chinese ship ran aground on the Great Barrier Reef off the coast of Australia. The tanker has been spewing out gobs of oil into this natural wonder, but the troubling payload of the ship is the 65,000 tons of clean coal headed towards Chinese power plants. It's because of accidents like these that a coalition of First Nations is opposing a proposed pipeline that will move nasty ass oil from the motherfucking tar sands to big ass super tanker ships on the coast of BC. The 100 plus communities that have expressed their disgust with the Enbridge project make up most of the BC coast, making it impossible for Canada to pipe tar sands oil through its stolen territory to the Pacific Ocean. Enbridge is the same company behind the Clipper pipeline that will bring tar sands oil to the U.S. Here is Coastal First Nation Executive Director Art Sturrett. I think Enbridge is going to find out that we, uh, we are not trifling with this. There's going to be uh, uh, legal and whatever other means that we can use to stop this. And last but not least, a Mexican newspaper claims to have snapped a shot of Subcomandante Marcos, the leader of the indigenous rebel group the Zapatistas. As a response to this allegation, Marcos issued a statement and decided to unmask himself. I'm going to give you two things. First, my photo. Without a ski mask. And then I'm going to take it off. Salud, 
humanidad. Estas fueron nuestras demandas en la larga noche de los 500 años. Estas son hoy nuestras exigencias.